blockchain technology. Uh, I remember my guests, uh, I'll, I'll introduce to them shortly here. We've had a conversation about stories that the dark web, forex trading, etc. And interesting enough, these guys are like the back end holders. And I was telling them, I'm calling them uh, gatekeepers. So you're definitely going to get into the conversation about digital currency risks and regulations. And joining me live in studio, I've got a DDG. Owonibi, he's a blockchain forensic investigator and a senior partner at A and D Forensics. And then his counterpart is uh, Sewe Wycliffe, he's a cryptocurrency investigator. Good morning to you guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, let me begin with you. Uh, you said Deji. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a yeah. lot of people would prefer to call you Deji. Yeah, Deji. Was All, right. All right. So just a brief history of you shortly, how you got into this space, and how it has led you to have this interview right here. Okay, so uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Adit Deji Olibi, and um, so I used to work in, in, in commercial banks uh, in my earlier lives. I was working like four commercial banks in Nigeria, and uh, afterward, of course, uh, I moved in to, to start a firm uh, called A&D Forensics, where we do mostly forensic consulting. Mm -hmm. uh, we help uh, also people track things that you know, they want to know what, what, what actually happened. So we're doing that for international organizations. Right. Um, few international organizations, Save the Children, you said, you know, mention them, few, right. few of those. And um, um, most times when we, normally we ask to follow the money, if you may, you know, check what is really happening, you know, right. uh, if maybe after a particular donation, a particular fund and all that, you need to know uh, what happened? Did he get to where the money is w was meant to get to? Right. So we had this particular experience uh, a couple of years back where uh, we're trying to check out one and um, some of the money found their way into Bitcoin. Right. And nobody within our team have an yeah. understanding on how to investigate it or even knew anything about it. Right. And so we knew there's a challenge with what we do. Right. And then we have to up our game by going to learn more about it. Right. So then I've been pushing and trying to check how I can learn that. And that led me to um, this cybersecurity market fee uh, right. uh, in the US where we, we, we did um, certified cryptocurrency forensic investigators course. It was also right. very new mm -hmm. with few law enforcement in US. Um, and uh, we took that and um, right. when I of course got certified, I came back to Africa yes. to make sure you know we change everything now to digital asset forensics. Right. which was not existing anywhere within African shore. And you started in Nigeria? Yeah, we started first. off in Nigeria, but uh -huh. of course we're touching Zambia, Tanzania, Rwanda, and now we're in Kenya. Yeah, uh, so you're so branching to almost uh, all African yeah, countries. Yeah, because <laughs> it's, it's, it's a fundamental problem. Um, right. there's, there's a new money in town, which is the digital asset, right. and the bad actors are also taking opportunity that it is new, Yes. And it's an arbitrage for law enforcement because they don't know it. Right. Uh, so that is the presumption they have. Yes. And so they move quickly. Uh, like, you know, criminals move quickly to right. embrace technologies that think, yeah. that think can help them hide their, their tracks. Yes. And so they're all there. And right. um, so we're trying, we've been empowering law enforcement. We've been working with law enforcement, anti-corruption agencies across, especially, for example, in Nigeria. Right. Um, the body is called EFCC. And so right. the... A lot of training have gone in there, and now they are able to confiscate a lot of these stolen assets or maybe hacks, or, you know, all the cyber criminals that will possibly convert yeah. the normal proceed of crime to yes. digital assets. So now they have capability to investigate them and yes. also confiscate those assets. Right. And so we want to make sure that this is empowered across African law enforcement right. because, again, they are still struggling with the technology of normal money before. Now there's a newer one, so there's a yes. challenge again for both regulators so I've yes. been engaged with regulatory policies around the world for right. example mm -hmm. and of course within Africa I've been contributing to most of that mm -hmm. within the security exchange uh, within the central bank so I'm, I'm a constant trainer to the central bank in my country right. and we do those trainings every year and yeah. so we're also doing I think we've done a bit in uh, Zambia also right. uh, with the financial intelligence unit and we're looking to do something like that for Kenya because it's highly needed here. Yeah. And now we've had so many stories of people being scammed and <laughs> whatnot. So, <laughs> and it's interesting your counterpart has uh, expertise on how to investigate the rest. So definitely, Wycliffe, you can go ahead and share a little bit history of yourself. Well, thank you so much, uh, and also for this wonderful opportunity. Just as you have said, uh, my name is Sir Wycliffe, and uh, I'm currently a certified uh, cryptocurrency investigator and also a compliance specialist as well. 
So uh, my history into joining the crypto world began back then when uh, I used to participate in the Forex trading. And uh, that's almost like five years ago. So through that, uh, I came into contact on matters of cryptocurrencies. And from there, I could uh, see people uh, like uh, complain left, right, and center in matters of uh, scams. So in my mind, I was like, uh, do we really have like the gatekeepers who can be able to help these people to avoid uh, the escalating issues in terms of uh, scams? So that's actually what now motivated me to dive deep into trying to understand the crypto space and also try to get the needed certification. And also with my background in criminology and security studies, I think that also comes in handy to help me create that much needed awareness, especially for those people who would want to invest into the crypto space. Right. Yes. Maybe you can also start from defining cryptocurrency because there's a there's big confusion between <coughs> Bitcoin, Forex trading, <laughs> cryptocurrency, <laughs> and even the whole blockchain spectrum. Yes. Maybe you can you can start by defining that for a person who has no awareness what cryptocurrency means. Okay, thank you so much. So probably uh, I know uh, people talk about uh, cryptocurrency, some also talk about uh, digital currencies. So allow me to uh, put it into segments. So when you talk about, for example, digital currencies, we are basically talking about the digital money. And uh, this digital money, we it's usually, uh, they are used as a means of payment, but they normally operate in an electronic format. So uh, they are totally different from uh, physical cash. For example, with the uh, Kenya shillings or the mm -hmm. coins which you normally have, given that with this one, they, uh, they are in digital format. So with digital currencies, they are uh, categorized into different uh, segments. We have got what are called the central bank uh, digital currencies, which are regulated by the central banks of a particular country. Yeah. Right now, if you look uh, across the world, we have been seeing most governments trying to find out how they can be able to incorporate the central bank digital currencies in order to supplement the fiat currencies which they have. Yeah. So under the digital currencies, again, we now have the cryptocurrencies, which are now uh, virtual currencies. And then from there now, we have got another segment which is called the stable coins. And the stable coins, with that one, it's it, uh, it has been pegged with the fiat currency so that it can be used to caution volatility, which normally happens a lot when it comes to the normal currencies you are using. Yeah. When yes. you say fiat currency, <laughs> <laughs> somebody doesn't understand <laughs> that one, fiat currency. Is this okay. the normal money? Yes, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. let me uh, uh, keep it a little bit uh, not technical, but fiat currency basically means the normal money that you're using, the Kenya shillings note or the Kenya shillings coins. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Uh, hopefully in the part. <laughs> but now, uh, Deji, uh, where do you come in in, in in this conversation, in the whole blockchain spectrum? Yeah, so we we decided to, to call our expertise around compliance, right. risks, and just, of course, regulatory guidance. Uh, we, we give those supports there. So um, for different cryptocurrencies, like you mentioned, um, the difference between that and your normal Kenyan shilling, and some people, we argue, when you say, oh, this is money, but in digital form, then they say, okay, M-Pesa is digital. Right. So, so what's, what's the difference? And right. so the difference is now the underlying technology right. that powers the cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. Yes, M-Pesa is digital, and you can, if you have your Kenyan shilling in your bank app, it's also digital. Right. What is different from um, the cryptocurrency uh, because of the underlying technology? So the technology have some few uh, inherent features that made it very unique and that's why you hear a lot of people mention of uh, blockchain 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 yeah yes blockchain uh, it powers a lot of things and money is one and wherever you have money it is more popular you know right. so people go to where that is popular but of course you can use that technology to power a lot of things uh, that are our problem in africa for example right. so there's 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 a technology I, i'm involved with um, a particular solution and the newspaper said instead of sending your aid to Africa, you better off bond the aid money than give to Africa. Yes. Why? Because if they believe that donors' money, when they come here, they don't get to the last mile. Right. They don't get to the vulnerable people. Right. So one beautiful thing about the blockchain technology yes. is that you can use it for transparency. Mm -hmm. So whatever happens on it, I don't have power to alter it. Not the government have power to alter it. Nobody can alter it. 
right. and everybody can see it. Mm -hmm. So that feature of that transparency is great. And so, yes. and that is why you can use it for money, you can use it for a solution like a distribution directly to last mile. Yes. And now, so the donors will no longer say it is better you burn your aid money than give to Africa, but yes. now they can see the way their donor money is going because they have a transparent technology in blockchain right. to enable them to see that. Right. Another very beautiful inherent feature is the security. Right. So I, I, Which when is I was the most important yeah, part. So, so <laughs> when, I was, when I was doing a presentation to the central bank, right. and I asked a, a very basic question, and I said, the central bank here yeah, have a lot of security, cyber security professional, uh, yes. cyber security experts, and what they're doing is to protect the system. Yes. I said, but have you ever wondered why we have trillions of US dollars on Bitcoin network? Right. But they don't have a single cyber security specialist taking care of that system. Mm -hmm. And the whole global hackers that need money just yes. left it alone and refused to hack it. Right. Why that? And just because of the inherent security of the blockchain system. Right. That is very difficult for them to hack to get out that money. Yes. Even when they don't have a headquarters, they don't have cyber security specialists looking after that money. It's operated 24 hours, you know, but it's clear and because of the security of that right. blockchain technology. Because mm -hmm. when you want to do that, you spend billions of US dollars to be able to do that. So if you have that, you rather will not hack it, right. you just leave it alone. Right. So that kind of a security, most of the traditional IT systems we have mm -hmm. are migrating to blockchain because of this inherent security. Yes. Why, the, why the security, you may possibly ask, is that you don't have a single place you go to to hack it. Yes. It is distributed around the world. Right. So if I want to hack Bitcoin blockchain, I possibly will have to go around more than 40,000 or 50,000 different networks. Right. And I don't even know where they are. Mm -hmm. So that decentralized nature gave it that inherent security. And the data is not stored in one place. It's replicated across these global networks. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you take up one that you're aware of, you have thousands and thousands elsewhere you don't know. And it's right. the data are replicated equally. Right. So, so and of course, you know there's no network failure. So right. if one is down, you have thousands of also still on. So meaning you cannot come any day and say, well, I want to do a transaction on cryptocurrency. Oh, the network is down. Never will yes. that happen. Mm -hmm. so, so if you look at those features and what you have put on top of it, uh, you cannot delete. So it is transparent. So if somebody want to change any figure, maybe for a, a transaction to add up maybe a zero for, mm -hmm. for fraud or scam, yeah. you simply be open to everybody that yes. is operating that network to know oh, you're just doing that right. and, and it's not even going to be possible because again there's something we call consensus agreement right. so if you're adding anything everybody on the network have to agree mm -hmm. that that thing has to be on you so that kind of transparency right. is what powers that money so if you yes. check it um, if you want anything now if you want any information people will just tell you google it mm -hmm. because information is available to all of us right but money for a long time have not moved to the internet is just moving now yes and why can't money move to the internet money can simply not move to the internet because if I send you my picture if right. I take a picture of my phone and I send mm. it to you digitally right. I still have a copy of that of that picture and you have a copy yes so if it's money and I send you money yes. and I still have a copy of that that double spending and yes. money in its in inherent nature is that when I transfer it right. you give me a value in exchange so I don't have that money because I've spent it Mm -hmm. But anything digital, you can have a copy. Right. And so every technology in the world has not been able to support money to come on top of it. Mm -hmm. But blockchain on its own, when you transfer money, yes. it moves completely. I don't have a copy, even though it's digital. Mm -hmm. And that is why now But you still have the record of the transaction. You, yes. you have record, but yeah. you don't have the actual money. Right. But for, for the photo, I like gave you an example. I when I sent you, it. I still have a copy. Right. So that is why the blockchain technology is powering money because that double spend problem has been solved. Right. And so money is gradually moving to that rail. Right. And now we're moving to a digital money era, which is the digital currency we're talking about. All right, interesting. Before I ask you about uh, stories on digital assets, maybe in Africa so far, uh, what are some of the opportunities for Africa? Now that you mentioned you extended from Nigeria to Rwanda, now Kenya, also now for Kenyans specifically, what are some of the opportunities that are there for young people in the blockchain space? Before we talk about the legal implications and now also how to convert your assets into digital assets at large. Yeah, so, so I think it's the technology for young people. Right. Whether in Kenya, whether in Nigeria, whether in Zambia, mm -hmm. the people that embrace it more. 
It's actually the young populace, and it's simple. So it gives them, you know, real value because of its fluctuation. So it moves faster. Right. So they make more profit, even though there's other risks, like you say, we will discuss what those risks are. But the young people, you know, because they are young, they are absolute risk, risk takers. Mm -hmm. So the risks the young people will take, uh, somebody in his 50s, 60s will not be able to gamble with that. Right. Uh, but the young people are open to risks, and again, there's a lot of volatility. And I w most people tell me, oh, cryptocurrency is volatile, and that's why I don't go there. I say, for me, that is why I go there, because it is volatile. Yes. What it means is that if I have a 10,000 Kenyan shilling, it can easily make me 20,000 Kenyan shilling because it's not stable. Right. But again, it can also, you can also bring down your Kenyan shilling lesser, but which, if you understand the market properly, you'll profit. So take, for example, there's someone I spoke to around um, 2020 during COVID, and you know the financial market globally was, was crumbling. Yeah. Okay. And so, of course, Bitcoin itself is, is not going to be left alone. So right. it came crashing down. Uh -huh. And it left from $10,000 or thereabout to about $3,000. Yes. $3,000 plus. Right. So I call someone and I say, hey, this is the time to invest. Right. Because I know this particular level is not going to come any time near that particular region because right. of the disaster we had that time. Mm -hmm. And the person say, oh, Deji, just let me be uh, when it is time. You can explain this to me better. I say, no, just take opportunity of this. If you have $10,000, this is the time to invest. $10,000 is a lot. Yeah, but of <laughs> right course, he has that. He has that. Kenyan yeah, he has that. He has that. He's a very... Right. Uh, yeah. So what he did was, uh, I was able to convince him. He sent in $10,000. I will buy three Bitcoin. Right. Three. Three. Of course, it's less than 3,000 3, plus. With 10000 yeah. you got three. Mm. And that same year, November to December, the same one went to from that 3,000 in March, yeah. went to 65,000 US dollars for one. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. It's crazy. It doesn't make sense to mm. anybody that understands finance. Mm. Nothing like that ever happened. It's just a time mm. where there's a <coughs> generational shift in wealth. Right. And it's for young people. So mm. imagine an investment of 10,000 gives you for each one, mm. 65,000 cumulatively. Right. It's, it's, it's crazy. So that happens, but of course that kind of a uh, that, that kind of a move, which I told the person, hey, why not sell two, right? right? And he sold two to about one hundred and thirty thousand US dollars just for two, right? An investment of ten thousand. Mm -hmm. It does not happen for any finance professional. It does not make sense, right? But this is happening within the crypto space, mm -hmm. and so people can easily with the knowledge they have, right? Uh, because I studied it, mm -hmm. you know, I have an MSc in fintech, yeah. blockchain, and cryptocurrency, like you saw. So professors took us through the economics and mm -hmm. the fundamentals and the economic policy and uh, monetary policy of Bitcoin and all. So when you understand it, so you have a deflationary uh, nature. Right. And so when young people understand it, I, I can bet you they understand this terminology right. better. They're reading right. it. They're going through. So it's an opportunity for them to build their wealth. So countless of young people, when I speak to them, right. you discover that, okay, maybe the government is not really concerned about them. Yes. But as an economy that has no gate and right. they can enter and no restriction, right. and they're making a lot of their living out of it. Absolutely. So those are the things, you know, but they are in the risk, like you say, we'll talk about it later. Right. Uh, uh, for you, Wycliffe, uh, maybe what are the must-haves for a person who is just starting from scratch who wants to join uh, that space? And maybe uh, from you, from where you sit and what you've observed right here in Kenya, are there maybe strides you've made in terms of even advancing in the cryptocurrency space? Well, uh, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, allow me to uh, congratulate the current government which you have in place. Okay. And uh, the president has actually been advocating for uh, internet penetration, especially to regions which still, still lack access to internet. Yes. And the other day, I think it's two weeks ago when he made a comment and that mentioned about uh, how the youth should take advantage of that and start uh, looking towards uh, opportunities which are within the digital space. Yeah, you left only a remo task. Exactly. So I think there's a confusion there, <laughs> but yeah, yes, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. explain, they'll so definitely get e the picture. E exactly. Right. So uh, yeah. my colleague just mentioned about uh, a lot of opportunities which we have within the digital space. Right. Now, uh, I know for majority of the young people who are basically looking forward to uh, investing in this space, number one, of course, you need to have a, a, co a fully functioning laptop or a computer. You also need to have a smartphone, as uh, you know, for you, uh, when it comes to 
cryptocurrencies investing, the levels of entries, the barriers of entries are minimal as compared to when you want to invest probably in a, uh, maybe a piece of land or where there is a lot of things which are needed. Yeah. So uh, apart from that also, one needs to arm themselves with thorough knowledge and information yes. because mm -hmm. you'll find uh, what basically leads majority of the young people who are diving into this space to fall into the hands of scam and to lose a lot of much money. It's because they have not been taught or they have not exposed themselves to much needed education in right. order for you to probably invest wisely mm -hmm. and also do it in a professional way. Right. So uh, I think also uh, you'll allow me just to touch on yeah, some of the risks ahead, involved yeah. in, the mm -hmm. in this particular space. Okay. Now, mm, I'll uh, break them still into around three so that at least people can be able to know right. some of the risks which are associated with the cryptocurrency space. Of course, we have got uh, what are called the market risks. And the market risks, there you'll find uh, what is called the market volatility. Right. And uh, when uh, a new person enters the market and uh, do not have the needed skill or knowledge, they are exposing themselves to that market volatility, of which if they don't know how to uh, handle what is called risk management, they can right. even end up losing all of their entire investments. All right, M possibly maybe what could be happening there if they entirely lose their investment. <laughs> maybe trading wrongly, or mm, maybe exactly. hitting a wrong button. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You can explain further. Yeah, exactly. So with market volatility, you'll find that uh, there is a lot of um, uh, uh, changes in price, movement, uh, price movements. Or fluctuation. Their fluctuations happens right. very fast. Right. So it basically needs somebody who has been trained in that area so that you can be able to understand what exactly happens. Right. So that now when this particular person is taking uh, trading opportunities, he basically knows at what point he's supposed to be uh, uh, entering into his or her trades. Right. Also another area which... Is there a specific time? So uh, there's no specific time actually. Uh, you only just need to understand what happens in that space. So All right, yes, understanding, yes. understanding the yes. know-how. All right, proceed. So another uh, area where we have got, uh, which poses an, uh, strong risks is, uh, uh, they're called the cyber, cyber, cyber security risks. Right. Uh, in that area, you'll find we have got cases of hacking, we've got cases mm -hmm. of uh, uh, phishing attacks, right. of which I know my colleague will be talking, uh, will be tackling yeah, on how sure. we can, uh, especially okay. for those people who will be creating their wallets, how they can go about it to make sure mm -hmm. that their wallet is secure. Right. Also, we have got what are called um, the scams. Right. And with the scams, uh, personally, I've been... Uh, a victim of this, especially mm -hmm. back then when I was entering to this particular space. Yeah, so what happened? <laughs> so uh, I know being a youth like any other youth, right. uh, we always we always have that tendency of uh, wanting to get rich so quickly. Right. And uh, uh, we always lack that patience to learn and be able to wait for our investments to grow. Yes. So <laughs> when I got introduced in this space, back then I also came across uh, these numerous advertisements which normally have uh, 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 shown within the social media space. Right. And then from there, I think after investing my money, I was not able to get it back. So right. yeah. what happened? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you traded the wrong person? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Of course, these are just <laughs> yeah. Of course, these are just uh, wrong people who are right. basically masquerading um, as uh, professionals. Mm. Yes. So they usually know how to entice, especially the new people who are basically entering this particular market. Mm. Once you have invested your money with them, then uh, all of a sudden it just disappears. And uh, yes. the, uh, like three weeks ago, right. I was invited in one of the uh, uh, particular presentation. It was a business presentation. My friend just called me and told me, right. uh, say weekly for want you to come and uh, check something here for me. Mm. So when I entered that particular presentation and uh, when it was happening, I could clearly see some of the red flags. And immediately right. after that meeting, I just asked my friend, I'm wondering how comes majority of the people who are seated here can be able to listen to this presentation without noticing the red flags which are involved. Right. The so what could you the tell from the start? Exactly. <laughs> the reason why from my end it was so easy to be able to identify the red, fl uh, the red flags is because at this particular moment I'm educated and at right. least I've been in that space so I am able to understand. Yes. So uh, from that point I was like, uh, we I know we have got so many Kenyans in, um, who are also finding themselves in this space 
whereby they are being invited in such kind of forums. They lack awareness. They don't even know what's happening. When uh, they're being told, just bring your money, they're bringing it. And that's why uh, what we will be doing also is to make sure that we create that need awareness and education right. so that they'll be able to understand whenever I come across this, this is a red flag or this yeah. is a sign this of is a... Fake, this is fake, this is legit. This is fake, yeah. this is legit. Right. Yes. And that touches also on forex trading. Exactly. Because I think that's why a lot of people have been scammed, even for the ones I've interviewed here. Yes. Uh, they were scammed 10,000 or mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. somebody posed like an expert, like you said, yeah. they gave them 10,000 Kenyan sure, shillings, sure, they sure. disappeared. Sure, sure. But then the one I interviewed, I think it was last year said you even need uh, yeah, th there's a legal there's a legal agreement sometimes he you sign mm -hmm. even uh, on, th in, on the bank side as well mm -hmm. so I think mm -hmm. that was the legit mm -hmm. part yeah when the bank was involved <laughs> yes and right. uh, allow me just to mention one key area because I've right. seen it a little bit rampant right ahead. now uh, especially in Kenya right there is this thing which is called ICO uh, right. in full it's called the initial coin offering mm -hmm. initial yes. coin offering is basically a replica of uh, initial public public offering. I don't know whether you are okay. well versed with initial public offering. Whenever a company is setting up their structures and they're looking for ways on how they can be able to raise money so that they can be able to reach out to the masses All and right. people in uh -huh. uh, give them some share so that they can be able to, uh, to build up. Yes, exactly. Up. Okay. You see now with that one is a little bit different because with the initial public offering already the company has established itself. Mm -hmm. There are structures in place, physical location and addresses. Right. But now when it comes to the crypto, uh, crypto world, Right. With initial coins offering, remember, initial this coin, coin mm -hmm. is not yet in the market. Mm -hmm. So the people were basically pushing to attract investors who can right. be able to bring their money. So it's something which people have not yet seen. People have not yet uh, known how it's going to work out. So you find majority of those people who are pushing a lot of this initial co uh, coin offering, right. they are more or less like giving people hope mm -hmm. that once you give us your money, then this coin starts to function in the market, then yes. your returns will be uh, doubled or quadrupled in return. Right. Of which majority of the time, when you look at the history of the initial coin offerings which you have been having in the market, right. most of them usually end up crashing. Right. So and I that that's when they say I was scammed. And that's why <laughs> they say that I was scammed. Right. So I'll really uh, need to, probably especially for our viewers, they need right. to be so cautious, mm -hmm. especially when... Uh, 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 when uh, players are coming to the in, uh, space and they are telling them more about initial uh, coin offerings, they really need to go through what is called. I don't know whether I'll be able. Uh, I'll be sounding a little bit technical, but right. we normally have got what is called the white paper. White paper. So with the white paper, what it normally documents, it documents the use cases of a particular coin or of a particular cryptocurrency. Right. What are some of the uh, solutions which this particular cryptocurrency will be providing? So oh, this is not a bot. This is not a bot. All right. <laughs> I'm con uh, when you mentioned that, I was like, oh, is this what people say? I bought a bot, and then I'm, I'm looking at the history of this bot. But I'm, I'm, I'm now seeing it as you're explaining. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So with that white paper, it has got all the detailed information about that particular cryptocurrency or about that particular project. Okay. Of which, once an individual has gone through that, you also need to reach out, at least for professional experts who are right. well versed with that particular uh, field who can also be able to give you the much needed advice before right. you probably put your money on the neck yeah yes blindly blindly Don't yes do it. true yeah. true all right uh, the upside is also very conspicuous as well as uh, the downside maybe you can also talk about the risks and maybe also the legal implication on a starter yeah so thank you very much so like um, my colleague just mentioned you know um when people advertise things like that mm -hmm. i always tell them who are the right people within your country that regulates activities like that? Right. So for Kenya, for example, I say go to the capital market regulator, which is the authority that will yeah. Are those people registered with them? Yeah. Also, it, they must be registered by the, C the CMA. Yeah, the it fact doesn't matter they should if it's crypto <laughs> yeah. or maybe you have an IPO from right. a company. You should be registered with by the CMA. CMA. So you should demand for a CMA certificate demand sometimes. That. Demand yeah. that. Okay. Always. If Always. If someone is asking for you. For a CMA yeah. certificate. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if everyone, anyone asking you, can you, because it went very viral. In fact, what he was talking about went to its peak in 2017. Right. And in 2017, at the click of button, people are raising billions of US dollars in few minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, because again, now the market is not only to Kenya. Right. If you are a Kenyan, doing that ICO, which is the initial coin offering, yes, uh, is, is similar to initial public offer. 
right. in the traditional market world. Mm -hmm. So if you have the stock, uh, the stock exchange, for example, here, you, see, you know the shares of companies are traded there, yes. right? And because those people have issued the share. And if you want to raise new capital, you go to CME, yes. they approve, you appoint banks that will collect it, they right. will supervise that process. So yes. that's why I can say, oh, I need 2,000 shares in X company. And I right. just give my shillings and I get that shares. Right. But you must be worth it first. Yeah, it, must those be companies worth are existing, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, but for crypto, they don't right. have to exist, like you said. Right. All they would do is, and anybody can put that out. Right. It can be just me and him. Yes. And we say, hey, say, well, I just need to raise $10 million. And we will right. raise it. Right. We just do paper. We do white yes. paper. We yeah. write beautiful things there and right. promise so much that the token is going to be doing. Right. You know, because he mentioned use cases. So people yes. can craft use cases even there are not existing. Yes. And people say, oh, in a few years, this project is going to go massive. I quickly buy. Yeah. And when you, when you put it on, uh -huh. Globally, everybody, you know, we have a universal money, so right. they can collect any cryptocurrency, yes. and they harvest all that, and right. they simply disappear. Right. And so nobody is regulating them, so you don't know who to ask. Yes. And so that is why we And that's are a risk. That's why we say they have to be regulated. Yes. And why African countries now are coming up with regulation, I understand. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Kenya is also coming out with VAPs, what we call VAPs, Virtual Asset Service Providers, right. to regulate all these activities. So you don't go to give anybody your money to, to get a part of a token if they are not registered by SEMI and licensed by SEMI to operate, right. for example. So those are the guides that I think uh, mm -hmm. citizens should look out for. Right. Yeah. Right. And, uh, and I think it's an, it's an interesting and very integral part because uh, right now, like you said, this conversation is literally picking up in Kenya. Mm -hmm. I remember you mentioned the story of the president saying, you know, you only just have to sleep and press. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Battle, because I, I, I saw the president, <laughs> you know, he's talking to a young good man. joke on yes, it, yeah. yes, yes, I saw yes. him talking to a young man right. who has generated a lot of money mm -hmm. working online. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. And that's what a lot of people do. If you check, young people don't go to offices now. Right. You know, all you need is a laptop. True. You work for international True. companies. True. Right. You work for these cryptocurrency companies. Right. And they pay you while you're here. Mm -hmm. So right. those are the new world we're living in. But it's not without its own risk, right? And that is why we're discussing that. Look, why not watch out for some red flag? Right. When somebody is over-promising you returns, yes. that does not make sense. Yes. For example, you know this is not feasible. Yesterday True. I was, I saw on a, on a yes. forum, um, the company was promising 400% return. <laughs> Right. Right. That is not, it doesn't make sense. That's it's a big percentage. Yeah, it's not, I don't know. <laughs> so, but when yeah. you promise me 8%, right. 7%, okay, maybe it's possible because what are you going to be selling? Right. You know, that will make you this percentage, <laughs> you know, <laughs> away from the general economy. For right. example, you go to lock your money in the bank, maybe they give you 10%, 15%, or thereabout. Right. And then somebody is promising you 400%. That's the first red flag. Right. Because, you know, when you're too greedy, that is the trap they do for you to go to go enter. So you can make it systematically, really. And and just in your description, you've mentioned the things that you're looking out for that you are also in your area of expertise include cryptocurrency crime. You've mentioned that the dark web involving the dark web, terror finance, money laundering, tax evasion. This is a big thing with the elites. The elites who have big money. Uh, hopefully you do as well. Mm -hmm. Now that you are, <laughs> you're like a, <laughs> you're like a gatekeeper <laughs> <laughs> and financial crimes and regulations. Maybe you can touch on it a little bit, especially the tax evasion part in the digital space. Is it also monitored? Yes. Uh, are, are you supposed to pay tax? Because yes. I hear that space people don't pay tax you no should more. Pay tax. You, you should pay tax. You should pay tax. Okay, please talk. So, so, so I was speaking with our, with our reg revenue agency, for example. Uh -huh. And so there's this company that does annual research on right. cryptocurrency activity per country, including Kenya. Right. So we know how much volume. So for Nigeria, for example, last year, Nigeria did about about 60 billion US dollars reported. That's a lot of money. Well, that is just like 20% of the 20% of it? Yeah, of the 60 activity. billion. Good Lord. So, so where, where are the tax elements in that? Yes. And I believe Kenya, Kenya would have done about 40, uh, 40 or, or more billion last year. Mm -hmm. Where are the tax elements there? So right. the simple reason is that you have the likes of revenue agencies not there yet. Uh, you have also government not out with regulation to say, like for Nigeria, for example, 10% tax is due on any crypto activity you do. Right. So, and if you don't have the laws and regulation, there's simply no offense because you don't know nobody's asking you to do. Yes. And that is why it is great what the uh, Blockchain Association of Kenya are doing in pushing the bill yes. to make sure that people 
I mean, the government take its due taxes from this because the, the actual thing is that it's in a different realm. And yeah. it's difficult for government to go there to monitor what is happening. And yes. those are the kind of services we're giving. Yes. So you need visibility to activities that are happening within the crypto space. Right. How many exchanges are actually today operating in Kenya? Yes. Those are the questions that government should be able to answer. Yes. And you, the exchange, how many of these Kenyan uh, customers do you have? Yes. Those are questions that government should have. With yes. Them. So they should be monitored. They have to. And be have a record as well. They have to be monitored. Which is a good and a bad thing. Eh? I know to the people in the forex trade, the, the, in the forex trading they space, they've been like, well, no, I don't want anybody yeah. to know yeah, how much I've made. They don't have a choice. <laughs> For example, if I make one billion US dollars yeah. right now, and uh, I, I want to direct that money to my bank account, definitely the bank will ask me, how did you make this money? Yeah. And in fact, I have to write a letter to explain to them how I got the one billion. Why should I? Yeah, and, and for example, for crypto, you don't have to send it to the bank. Mm -hmm. For example, that is where it becomes a bit dicey. Right. For if you make one billion, 100 million in crypto as profit. You simply send it to your personal wallet. So the yes. government do not have visibility. Yeah. So but you know, there, there's a way you will withdraw to your M-Pesa, especially in Kenya. It will come to your M-Pesa and then maybe your bank account again. Yeah. As compared to like just having it stay in that digital wallet. Yeah, but if I, if I move, let's for example, if I move uh, 10,000 Kenyan shilling from my profit to M-Pesa, right. I have no idea where that money is coming from. Yes. Yeah, but what we say, you have to go to the base Right. where that money is made and to be able to understand it. And the danger is this. Uh -huh. uh, if you don't, a lot of uh, uh, maybe corrupt people maybe right. will have taken money for the poor, converted to this, and laundered right. the money out. That mm. is one of our money That's laundering. That's another way, yeah. laundering, so, money laundering. So, so and <laughs> also, if you're, if you're having terrorists, for example, right. if you send them in PESA, it's traceable. People know right. it, government know. If you send money to them through a bank, government yes. know. So they choose to receive cryptocurrency, which you can send directly to their wallet. Right. And so you're funding terrorism. Mm -hmm. So if law enforcement don't understand that, uh, government is not in that space. So that's very risky for all of us. Right. And that is why we're, we're, we're of the opinion that this has to happen before we give you know, those support for, for this to be investigated for which money came to where, who is trading what, right. and who, where is it going to. Right. And of course, put all the safe guys in place right. and make sure that money laundry, terror financing, darknet market, for example. So you wouldn't want a place that have all the powers to sell your credit card information in the darknet market. Absolutely. And yeah. in darknet market, people buy credit cards, mm -hmm. people buy hacking tools, so you don't need to go to university to study cybersecurity or understand hacking. Yes. You simply go to the darknet market, buy the processes to hack the right. system, uh -huh. and a, young, a lot of young people go there, and the yeah. money that powers those darknet market Right. It's, it's neither Kenyan shilling or US dollars. Mm -hmm. They use cryptocurrency to do their exchanges because right. they understand it's not traceable. Right. And that is the that is the mystery, the mystery about that. Yeah, but that is the that. thing we're trying to clear that this is right. not true. Yes. That this is not traceable. Right. I remember I, I my our central bank governor in my country, you know, at a time when he gave instruction to the banks to say, do not touch cryptocurrency anymore, yeah. and it's because we have an understanding that this is money for criminal. This yes. is money that cannot be traceable. Yes. And I completely disagree with him on, 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 on uh, different medias. Yes. Because why? We have the cryptocurrency forensic lab within just a few kilometers to the corporate headquarters of the central bank. Mm -hmm. And this can be investigated. It is cheaper and faster to investigate than the normal money. Because right. I understand, I told you about the features of blockchain, which is yes. the transparency. transparency. So without right. knowing anything, you could go check who is doing which transaction and how much. Yes. As and definitely they'll need people like you. <laughs> no, everyone really. So that's Every why you need to educate everyone. Yes. yes. So uh, when you go to Blockchain Explorer, yeah. as we're seated here, yes. I see every transaction happening in the world. Everyone yeah. can see. Oh, you can be able to see the names, the accounts? You're not seeing you know, the names. So that's where our experts Oh, just the transactions so, now. So if anybody, uh -huh. maybe somebody has stolen somewhere, he converts it to cryptocurrency. All right. Everyone in the world can see, but you don't yes. know who. So All that's right. where our own expertise has come to lay out what we call the personal identifiable information. All right. So because uh -huh. there are a lot of touch points you can aggregate right. to know who the person is. So we've done a few investigations. Uh, the last one we just did uh, currently before I came here. The young man le uh, lost his money, over 500,000 US dollars, for example. Mm -hmm. And he was wondering what happened uh, to that. And when he came, of course, we put in the wallet address in our lab because we have different tools. I'll begin to trace where money have touched everywhere to the last mile. So mostly, the criminal we want to, because you don't collect cryptocurrency. If you're selling something now today, 
you have fewer people that say pay me in cryptocurrency. Yes. So they must look for a way to convert that back to Kenyan shilling, for example, to make right. sense yes. for them to be able to transact. So at the point of conversion, you either have to touch m yes. or you have to go to a cryptocurrency exchanges and also touch there to be able to convert it. Yes. So at that touch point, that's where we wait for you. Yes. Yeah, then we know who. All this wallet we've been looking at, so actually this is the guy that has it. So you put right. them together and you go uh -huh. pick him up. Yes. You know, and the tools actually can give you the location of the person mm -hmm. doing that transaction. So for a lot of time, we have given law enforcement those yeah. support. That's when this guy will come in. Yeah, they just go and pick, uh, pick up. <laughs> They'll come <laughs> to your doorstep. They're like, hey, we we we, we seen something. Yeah. So <laughs> so it's not it's not as difficult as right. maybe government. Or it really sounds like you know. Uh, it's very simple. French, really. but it, yeah, like you put it, it sounds like A B C D. Yeah, it's very simple. Really. Right. And everyone. you mentioned uh, you also mentioned hacking. That I believe now there's like black hackers and white hackers, which is like there's. They are allowed to do the work, and then there's these other ones who like just uh, they penetrate through places they are not supposed to. And now I've seen uh, it's not a bad thing as well. Yeah. So additionally, like our company, what we do, we do the cyber security service. Right. So we hack, but we have for good. Yes. So the simple reason why. So you're you tell white us, hackers. So you tell us. You tell right. us. We so we do what we call vulnerability assessment of your system right. mm -hmm. and penetration testing of your system. So mm -hmm. if you build an IT solution. Right. Before you go to the market, you come to us right. and say, I want you guys to test it, which you will pay for as a service. Right. I want to test it. I want you to do an assessment of my system. Is there any vulnerability that hackers can take? Right. And when we check those vulnerabilities, we tell you, this is how you have to patch it. Yeah. This is what you need to do. Right. And periodically, we come to check your system by penetrating it yeah. legally, you know, because you want that service from us. Right. So when we test it, if there's anywhere we find that it's, it's not strong enough, we tell you just what you need to do. Right. So it's a cyber security service that most companies do. And A&D Forensics, for example, yes. offer that kind of service also. Right. So for the bad actors, of course, they are black hackers, like we call them. Right. They want to hack for profit. Mm -hmm. you know, and even countries are hacking. Yes. You know, so if you like, for North Korea, for example, they have a train of teams. Yes. That they train those teams and they send them to the world to hack any system hackable to get revenue for the state. Right. So those are state-sponsored hackers. Right. And so those are all people you have to guide your system against. Mm -hmm. Countries have to guide their system against them. Right. And so that is where our kind of expertise come in. Come in. in. I'd, I'd love to know about uh, the hacking part. <laughs> so that I terrorize the people that are, that, that, that are, who, who are trying to jokingly play with us because I'm kidding. I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, le let's get into it, Wycliffe. Uh, in, in this country, right here in Kenya, uh, the president mentioned stories of Emo Tusk. And uh, there's, a, there's also a part where they, they mentioned, I think it was a site called Iwaka, which I believe is like a remote uh, remote uh, yeah. uh, site where okay. people can work and earn money. Okay. Maybe right now in Kenya, what are some of the, um, let me say, the sites that people can uh, join and still make money in the cryptocurrency space? You can, you, you, can, you can say the names. Oh, you can say the names. <laughs> yeah, you'll you be advertising the them. Yeah. Yeah. Be but maybe them. just maybe but more opportunities. Few yeah, a few platforms that can help Kenyans make money. Yeah, uh, of course, we have got uh, a few platforms which are, of course, regulated by the Capital Markets Authority. Right. So probably what I can uh, advise most of the audience who are watching, if you just uh, log into the Capital Markets Authority website and then uh, search for uh, those platforms where you can be able to trade cryptocurrency, I think uh, the ones which are valid and licensed, you can be able also to get them from that point. Yes. Right. Uh, there's someone I interviewed here who, at some point, they had a scandal that you know they were scamming people with forex trading. Yes. So what could have possibly happened for a person who is doing forex trading, and then they they've been scammed, or maybe they're using that to scam other people? What could be happening behind the scenes for them? Uh, okay. Maybe just to get your question, uh, they've been scammed at what point? Like uh, they. They, they, like you said, they were like a group of people who are posing as uh, professional forex okay, traders, okay, and good. then people joined them, and then all of a sudden the money disappeared, and then okay. it was out there in the public. Okay, that good. this person is a professional claiming okay, to be a professional okay, forex trader, okay, good. but yet people's money is. <laughs> so, uh, al allow me to like uh, handle it in uh, different segments when it comes to uh, forex space also as well. So, uh, scammers usually have got different techniques. And uh, one of them usually come in form of offering what is called signals. And uh, signals basically means, in Swahili term, mwa Kenya. So mwa Kenya is basically someone who has studied how the market works. Then uh, he gives you like uh, 
uh, already analyzed uh, already analyzed entries so your work is just to copy paste whatever he has given you to your trading platform so what normally happens a majority of the people you are supposed to be paying for that particular service so you will realize uh, someone who is not a professional in that particular space he will charge money yet in reality the kind of signals that he's providing are totally uh, uh, not making sense right. another aspect is in the issue of uh, robots i had you mention about uh, the bots, uh, the bots. Mm -hmm. yeah so you'll realize uh, uh, as kenyans given that have been in this space we love what can actually bring us quick money right without working extra hard for it and it's right. also a problem which faces majority of the youths right. so when scammers uh, comes into space they'll basically tell you i have got this bot which even if you're asleep even if you're busy working doing other things it can be able to scan the market on your behalf and it yes. can be able to pick entries on your behalf yes. and you'll be able to make profits out of it yes. so you'll find that uh, this particular scammer will end up selling to you this bot some of them even cost as expensive as three thousand dollars four thousand five thousand dollars very expensive but because when it's being presented to you you'll be like this will probably like sort all my problems you'll basically end up paying the three thousand four thousand dollars then you end up having something which totally doesn't work mm. so at the end of the day your money has been scammed right so <coughs> also another aspect of scamming in that space where people get to run away with your money is the education bit right. so someone will come and tell you uh, i need to train you but this training probably will go for one week and then we are done you see uh, the world of cryptos the world of forex this is a new uh, thi this is like a, a whole career and uh, i normally tell guys if someone comes and tells me, for example, in criminology and security studies, we, this course which I'm currently pursuing, and someone comes and tells me that I can be able to teach you criminology in two weeks, and then you'll become an expert in that particular field. Mm -hmm. That one doesn't sound as if it's something which is uh, possible. Uh, possible and genuine. But you see, the reason why scammers love using this language is because they don't want you to have that mentality of, do I really need to study for that longer in order for yeah. me to get to understand this? Yes. So people usually fall into mm -hmm. those ones, given that they are like, okay, good. I'm only be, um, uh, I can only be trained for one week, two weeks, and then I'm good to go in the market, of which most of the time it doesn't work that way. Right. So you will also end up paying a lot of money right. with that space of one week or two weeks, and then what normally happens, they'll just brush you through. Even by the time now you are entering into the crypto space to probably mm -hmm. trade your like, uh, you can't even recall whatever you have taken through, but your money is already gone. Yes. So those are some of the areas where scammers usually uh, 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 take advantage of, especially for the vulnerable people, yes. those who don't understand what is required. Yes. Yes. And uh, I, th there's, there's, uh, there's, there's a, a story I had where they were, they, they were told, I already have an account, you just... Uh, and then they mentioned this account has like maybe 5,000 Kenya shillings. So maybe you just need to top it up for another 5,000. <laughs> I don't know if it's true. Yeah, There yeah. can be an existing account. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Uh, of course. Uh, 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 without probably touching on the too much technicality especially so that our viewers can be able to understand. Right. Mm -hmm. You see, whenever you are, let's say, uh, trading, uh, you need to have like a trading account and in this trading account we normally have got uh, two segments where we have got what is called the demo trading right. and where we have got where you can be able to deposit the real money oh that's like the dummy account the dummy account it's not withdrawable it's not withdrawable so with the dummy account hopefully it doesn't have ten thousand us <laughs> dollars <laughs> then because <laughs> so that already <laughs> exactly <laughs> especially now if you're starting i can only imagine <laughs> a demo account exactly with 10, US exactly dollars and not withdrawable true so with the dummy yeah. accounts, basically the reason why it's there is yeah. to help you be able to like uh, practice your skills whenever you're going through the training process. Right. And uh, mostly what scammers usually do, because they know you don't understand how this software platform works, Work. uh -huh. he will basically come up with a dummy account. So he'll right. basically tell you, I want you to send me money, then I'll be able to load it on yes. your uh, 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 on your behalf into your account. And then I'll be able to screenshot what I have so that yes. you can be able to see it. And true, they'll have, they have it. Ex exactly. <laughs> so they will uh, 
customize the Demi account with the probably the number of dollars which is required. Let's say you have agreed to deposit four thousand right. dollars, so they'll customize it. Then you will send the four thousand dollars, right. then they'll send you a screenshot, and right. then they'll be like, okay, good. Now you have got your account. Right. But in real sense, <laughs> whatever you basically have is something which is dummy, and your yes. money is already has already, already disappeared. Gone. Yes, right. and that's why bottom line, Presumably. before you jump into this space, into the crypto space. You basically need to seek advice from professionals. Professionals, exactly. Uh, is it possible for someone to go to the CMA and ask if I want to maybe start uh, this, uh, join this blockchain space? Uh, yes. Maybe they can also be directed. Does exactly. Does it offer that? Exactly. CMA? And uh, especially now with the current uh, bill which was already drafted, right. of course, which is still await uh, waiting for the first reading in Parliament right. so that at least uh, it can move now to. Uh, some other stages. Yes. I believe once it 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 passes, uh, capital markets authority will now have that mandate to be able to like uh, tell you which exactly are the ones which you have licensed, yes. so that you can be able to access them, use them, find much information, and uh, probably uh, conduct your crypto trading skills and uh, investment from them. All right. Yes. Interesting. Uh, I'll so bring this conversation to a close, uh, DJ. Do you feel like in Africa, uh, we need to have this this kinds of conversations more and more and more, and we need awareness, and maybe even have to do things like mentorship mm -hmm. uh, forums so that you know young people can get to know about this. And also if you were to uh, maybe give an estimation in terms of percentage of people that have the know-how of how that spectrum works, maybe from where you sit, uh, where are we as a country? And then also finally, maybe uh, if, if you are to uh, let maybe say be, be, be in a panel to advise the president on how to ensure that Kenya is at a certain level when it comes to this uh, blockchain conversation, what would you say? So I'll say overwhelming percentage of young people mm -hmm. are playing there. Mm -hmm. uh, whether they understand it now is a different thing. Right. To gauge if they do understand, but I think a overwhelming majority of young people understand cryptocurrency. They know how it works. And... Um, they just need education on how to trade there and also mitigate risks. Right. I think that is what is missing. And know that's how what we're on doing. navigation. Yeah, yeah. Right. Education, okay. education, education is what I uh, advocate for young people. Right. It's not enough for you to rush into it because we think there's an opportunity. Again, young people, like I said, are risk takers. They, they jump on opportunities and that's where they're, so they're yeah. succeeding, right? So the but percentage of the people in the space are Yeah, so maybe not able to put percentage on it, yeah. But I would say maybe if you check the young people, maybe right. I would give them a 20 percent. All right. Actually, okay. because it's still a bit low, because we can pick the people that understand it in Kenya, for example. We're having right. meeting after this with yes. mm -hmm. with a lot of them, mm -hmm. and right. you know. So we know it's there. They have to push it out. Uh, right. I think uh, the Blockchain Association of Kenya is doing a lot. Right. We'll be doing a lot of that. What you're doing as a as a as a TV station is is fantastic, right. because again you're reaching wider audience. Right. So I think the fundamental thing is education. There's a lot of risks. There are opportunities, yes. but we need to be educated as this happens. Yes. And if you are aware to advise the president, and, and I say this anywhere I go to, again, uh, I've been with them this journey for some years, and internationally I see how regulation goes. Right. And the, if you check the West, they are faster. Yes. You know, the, the moment they came, there are, they have a lot of working groups. They're putting a lot of you know, contribution together, and they're putting laws in place quickly, right? right? So what I would say is to fast track this deal right. and make sure that the atmosphere is correct. In Africa, for example, right. in crypto space, mm -hmm. Kenya is leading very, very strongly. Right. And it will be straight As free. compared to Nigeria, where you so, come from? So you mentioned <laughs> just three countries in, right. in, in Africa that is doing wonderfully well. Right. Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya. Kenya. Right. And then you don't have an excuse not to regulate it quickly. Right. And that is why the bill is something that they have to fast track. It's something that they have to create the framework for people to play safely right. so that when you go to CMA, they know how many people are licensed and those people have to protect the customers. Right. They have to put safeguards in place and um, all the regulatory frameworks. They have to respect those things. And right. then Kenyan citizens are protected. Right. Leaving it unregulated is simply leaving Kenyan citizens vulnerable to scams, right. vulnerable to bad actors. Mm -hmm. And then because we don't have the law, they don't see it as an offense because yes. I'm not breaking anything anyway. Excess so freedom. Th so <laughs> that's <laughs> why, so you leave it yeah. in a very you know, yeah. regulatory arbitrage where right. bad actors come. I was speaking to our 
Security and Exchange Commission in Nigeria. And I said, mm -hmm. what I want to tell you guys is not to, not to make me feel as an orphan. Right. Because as you as a father that protects me against these bad actors. But yes. when you don't do the law, I'm simply an orphan. Yeah. And so today, if bad platforms come, and you can check them out, you mm -hmm. know what they are going to tell you? Mm -hmm. Are you a U.S. citizen? They must ask you that question. Yes. And why, why are they asking you? Why though? Why are you asking? Yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to. Why are they asking you? Okay. It's because the U.S. Exchange Commission, Security and Exchange Commission, will come after you anywhere you are in the world if you defraud an American citizen. Right. So that is a father that looks after his own child. Mm -hmm. But if you leave me vulnerable, I'm, I'm simply an orphan. Right. And so that is why, uh, for me, if I'm to talk to authorities, quickly work with the blockchain association. Fast track this bill. Let there be law. Let there be any, a very you know, organized uh, environment for people to actually strive and make profit. Right. Uh, Wycliffe, uh, lastly, as we exit, uh, what would you love Kenyans to know about you as a person, what you do? Uh, I, I know my colleague had already touched on some of the key areas on uh, what uh, uh, we do. Uh, we basically help, we help in creating awareness right. more about uh, the cryptocurrency space. Mm -hmm. We also help with the tools, which are especially when uh, someone has suffered in the hands of the scammers, mm -hmm. we can be able to assist with the tools and also the law enforcement can be able to like, uh, be able to utilize them right. in order to, uh, investigate. Uh, to investigate. Right. So those are uh, some of the key things which we currently have in place and also with matters of compliance and regulations, yes. we are working in uh, partnership with the major regulatory bodies right. to ensure that uh, uh, to make sure that uh, the services which are being offered are compliant especially and they're more friendly to the consumers right uh, yes. we are exiting do you guys have a contact an email a website where people can get information and get to reach out to you maybe yes. one of you Our can address, local address yeah, yes we are uh, right. yeah yes uh, we are located in first uh, avenue parkland that is in parkland at uh, work style building so when you come there, just uh, you'll find us as A N D Forensics. Mm. Right. And Thank you. Of course, on social media, just check out A N D Forensics. And yes. And yes, Forensics. Uh, what does A N D stand for? <laughs> just A N D, just um, partners. In All right. Way. Yes. Yeah, that I was trying to figure out. out yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the partners. All right. Thank you guys for sharing this conversation. This is an endless conversation because I'm Talk. also a learner, so yeah. I've really learned so much. I need thank classes, you. to thank be you. honest. Thank you. I do. <laughs> but thank you guys for coming through. Thank you very much. All right. That has been Adeji Owonebi. <laughs> He's a blockchain forensic investigator and senior partner at AMD Forensics. And Sewe Wycliffe is a cryptocurrency investigator shining to us on uh, digital currency risks and regulations in Kenya. Definitely, you guys have gotten all the insights. And at this point, we take a very short break. We'll be coming back with much more. You follow me at Brian Sakwan1 and follow us at Y244 channel on the hashtag Go in the Morning. See you in just a bit. <laughs>